Hey guys, welcome to the shop in Midwest Gunworks. In July, we're going to be kicking off our monthly giveaway. For this month, we're going to be kicking it off with an awesome Cerakoted AR-15. So what I wanted to do was give you an inside look at the shop, the process of Cerakoting the firearm, and everything in between. Let's check it out. The first step in Cerakoting any firearm is going to be degreasing it. We like to use acetone and you'll see here that the upper, lower, and handguard, which are going to be Cerakoted, were put into a bath. I hang to dry and then what we're going to do next is sandblast the entire firearm. When sandblasting, I want to make sure that it's a nice, even coat so that the Cerakote has a solid surface to adhere to. When I get in the booth, the first thing I do is spray off all the excess sand, make sure it's clean and ready to roll for the first coat. The first layer that I'm going to throw down is black. This is going to give me a solid base and it's going to allow me to do a distressed look on all the other colors to come. We have an awesome paint booth here at MGW. We don't get any fumes and it's really nicely set up to be able to do multiple firearms at a time. You'll notice on this first layer, I'm spraying it on pretty thick. I want this so I get a good seal on the firearm and when I go to distress it, that I still have a lot of paint underneath. After I apply the first coat, I'm going to take it back to the oven, I'm going to pop it in there for about 20-30 minutes, let it cure really well, and then I'm going to start on my next layer, which you'll see here is going to be the white. After I spray the white layer on, I'll only cure it for about 10 minutes. This doesn't allow it to cure fully to where I can go back distress this paint and see the black that's going to come through from underneath. After I distress it, I'm going to add my first layer of stencils. This stencil is going to overlap over the white and the black distress so that my next layer will not get sprayed on top of that. You'll see as I add these layers, I'm trying to be very careful with not touching the firearm where I'm putting the stencils so they adhere well. After this, I will wipe down the firearm with a little cloth with some acetone on it to get rid of my fingerprints, the oils that came off, and still have a good base to set up the next spray. Next, I'm going to spray the red. As I spray this, you'll see I'm still making it pretty heavy as I want it to really be able to pop when I do add the next layer on top of it.
Now I didn't get the full spray of the blue as I forgot to hit the play button, but you'll see that I added the blue on the end of the handguard and kind of eased it into the red to make it a good, solid transition. Finally, I removed the stencils to see what it looks like. At this point on this particular Cerakote job, I'm going to distress it. This is by far the longest process as you wanna make sure that it looks good, but it doesn't look too uniform. This is a process that takes time, but you'll notice that it really adds to the look of the firearm. When I got to the end of this paint job, I realized that, man, this thing was cool. It turned out really well with the distressing and the different colors. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you see all of our upcoming content as we have many things planned for the future. And check out our giveaway on our website at MidwestGunWorks.com.